Good day again. <laughs> Let me ask you. Ain't you tired of coming to Kenya? Bro, I'm tired. Listen, when I leave now, mm. in two years, mm. I think two years, two and a half <laughs> two years, years, I'll be back. You know what? You know what's, You know what's in First of all, um, I don't think people really understand how far back this thing began. Because you know what I was thinking about this morning? I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the first time we went to Uganda? I, you've been there about three times now? Two times. Two times. Yeah. So the first time... Who, where did I go first? Did I, did I go Uganda first or was it Kenya first? No, you went to Uganda. Kenya first and then Uganda. Then Uganda. So yeah. we went to Uganda. And I don't know if you remember. We were doing a, um, a club appearance. And Dario was there. Yeah. You was there. Marquis was there, there yeah. as well. And I remember the security looked like they were just having, they were out there drinking, having the time of their life. So when we got out of the club, the driver was gone for, mm. your, for the range that you were in. And you had to jump into Chameleon's car yeah, yeah, to go back to, to, to the leave, hotel. To leave, to leave, yeah. <laughs> Please no, get crazy. Let me tell you, that show, I learned so much. And the reason I thought about it this morning is because, do you know I didn't get paid for that show? Yeah. So that's my young days of, of doing this thing. And I, 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 you know when the, when the promoter says, don't worry, man, I'm going to send you the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. That means make up your mind now. Are you yeah. doing this for free or not? Oh, God. But it was a nice show. I remember, like, you had to literally run from the... From the from the stage straight into the vehicle, straight back to the, it was a match of like, Bro, that was scary to like that's that's the first time mm. in a vehicle and just see I saw I saw the security break somebody's hand, bro. Wow. With a with a button. Whap. Broke it. Crazy. And me like and then somebody else just come and then I shake the van and me like, mm. what is this? Mm. Like me never exposed to them thing they yet in life. Yeah man, that Uganda story was was something else. But one thing I've always wondered, I've always wondered, like, how do artists in Jamaica perceive Africa? Because some, I tell you, you know, the way I see it, like some, you know, on social media, guys act like, oh, you know, guys just want to come to do shows because they know they can get money, which is, you want to do shows anyway to make money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but like, how, like when, when, when artists are viewing Africa, how do you think the perception is? I think enough Jamaican artists look at Africa as like a bucket list vibe mm. because we're African. Mm, exactly. And I mean, so like the, the, the idea of coming to Africa, even outside of just Rasta, mm. it kind of fake holy. Right, you understand right. what I'm So it kind of mm. instilled in us from, from young. True that. So like when you grow and you, and you know more things, the holiness of it kind of mm. gone unless you're a Rasta for real. Right, right, right. But the, the like, is an achievement for you for coming to Africa. Right, we right, see right. it as something where you're Africa, right. we need to go. Right. You know what I mean? Whether for religious belief or just for the fact that so we are African and mm. we come from Africa. Mm. So it's like a, 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 a definitely a bucket list thing right. to come to Africa. In terms of how we, they view the, the continent though, I think seeing it on TV or YouTube or whatever and coming here is, is mm. two different things. Right, right. Yeah. What's the difference? I can't say it. I, I can't, like, for a while, I try to pinpoint what the difference is, mm. and I can't say it, but it's just a different atmosphere than what, what the Western media, oh, or right, the right. media paint a picture right. of it. Because totally I mean, different. honestly, like, for me, even as, as, as a Jamaican that lives here, mm. I, my perception of Africa before I came was way different, mm -hmm. way, 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 way different from what it is now. I mean, before I came, I won't lie to you, bro, but I was in the UK and, like, Jamaicans and Caribbean people over here, mm -hmm. African people over here. And it was such a separation of, yeah. of cultures. And when I first came here, I was like, I didn't know what to expect for one. First of all, I will say it again, I thought that every single Kenyan would look like those marathon runners, those old <laughs> yeah. skinny dark guys, yeah. you know. But yeah. I think that what I think is, what I think is, is amazing is, is just seeing the evolution of how dancehall has been embraced. Bro, like, just say how you... Uh, Evolutionize, uh, revolutionize dancehall in Kenya, bro. Just say I helped, it. I helped. Just say it, man. Come <laughs> no, on. The evolution, continentally, continentally, like, I mean, I, I want, when I first came, and I was saying this to you earlier, that, like, I remember the first day I was like, I said to somebody, I want to go to a dance all night or a reggae night. And they took me to some place deep, deep downtown, places that I wouldn't even walk now, mm -hmm. you know? 
and took me to some club. What was those clubs called back in the day? You know, like those, you know, those downtown clubs, like where you don't know, even want to walk there in the day, but somehow I find myself down there, and I said, "This is not dance hall. This is like this." Like, the man was playing some. I mean, everything has its place, but the man played some some Joseph Hill and some. What are you, bam, bam, ba, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yo, I want to hear something yeah, content yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. and all them things there. So I think that, I mean, for me, see, and, and then traveling across the continent and seeing how artists like yourself, like, obviously, you can't, you, you have to mention the, the, the Kings, the Beanie Mans, the, mm -hmm. the Vibes Cartels, and it's, it's, it's just for me, seeing how the continent has embraced that over the, over the, the years that I've been here, it's been amazing, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's been crazy, and I think that, like, for you, yourself, you've played a very big role in that. Do you know what I mean? And even when people are telling you, don't come, changing your, giving you ID, conscious, <laughs> or TNO, all of these things, don't come. What does that mean? What does that mean? Or TNO is just a name. It's a, it's a Luo name. It means born in the... Huh? Born in the, in the night. It means born in the night? In the night. So, you see, like, how in, in Ghana, you, your name is denoted by the day you were born. So in the Luo tribe over here, if you're born in the night, it's Otieno. If you're born in the day, Ochien. And if you so say it's just a it's just a name. So so if you're born in the night, then it fits. <laughs> For real. Alright, when I know when I'm born. So <laughs> I'll take it. How do you see how do you see um I mean, obviously during this whole COVID situation, man, that that we've lived through a crazy, a crazy situation. Yeah. Like in terms of just globally. How do you see the resurgence of of live performance, you know? Are you happy to be back on the stage and back on the road? Bro, happy is an understatement, bro. <laughs> like, you know, I, and even with the risks that mm. still come with it, like, mm. I've been saying this from, from like eight, nine months ago, like, life still has to go on. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think the countries that are, are ahead mm. are the countries that started opening up earlier. Mm. You know what I mean? Even them numbers and everything are going low. I like it. I, mean, I like to talk about COVID because I'm mean, like a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> right, right. And I think the whole thing is made up. Right. But, um, yeah, the life... I can tell like, you it's not. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> I can tell you. Bro, I, I had COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not saying that it oh, doesn't oh, exist. Oh, made up as in, okay, I get yeah, that. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 it's real. But, mm. um, yeah, bro, just missing fans and missing people and mm. just you realise how much you love people, mm. like for real, you love people and you love people's energy. Mm. When, you, when you don't have that, that's when you realize, yo, what mm. is something big missing from your life, not just financially and not just, um, you know, the, the hit that every industry takes, but right. emotionally, it, it, yeah. you lose Can, connection with people. Yeah. No doubt. Mm. No doubt. And, and, and like, obviously, just seeing you on stage performing because I've, I wasn't able to go to the show because I was working. Yeah, yeah. And um, just seeing the clips on on Instagram and like just seeing you turn up the stage. And one thing hit me this morning, because I, 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 I knew you was kind of going to stop by the house today. Mm -hmm. One thing hit me this morning was that there's a whole new era of dancehall artists who don't know how to perform. I mm. don't know if it sounds like, because you see, I'm old school, I'm old there. Eh? So yeah. I can tell you, when I was in Jamaica, like, I used to go to Cinema 2, a place called Cinema 2, where they used to keep stage shows. I've seen mm -hmm. Lieutenant Stitchy, Papa San, all those old school guys, Admiral Bailey, perform right up the line to, to the new guys. But I think there came a time about maybe 12, 10, 12, 10 years ago when artists no longer were cutting their teeth through performances. You know, in those days, when, when you go to a dance, for example, you don't know who's gonna turn up and take the microphone and work the crowd and, and do it and do it live. Mm -hmm. And I I kind of see you as the last of the old school, the first of the new school. Does that make sense? As in, I see you as an artist who's because I've seen you on stage around the world and I've the connection a you have with the crowd, the the thought you put into your performances, you know, in the day your track listing, working out how you're gonna perform. I think that a big element of the new school dancehall artists won't last because they don't stay true to the ethos of dancehall, which is performance. Check this. All right, first of all, you have to big, put the camera up on you there. Come on, I can. Come on, I can. See, and put the camera back for me now. <laughs> while I say this. Like, you have some you to it. And this is not to bash anyone. I, say, I'm a, mm. I prefer to talk about someone who's 
doing it properly mm. than to speak about who is not doing it properly. Right. You know what I mean, so like there are some some new dan newer dancer artists that I see have the love for music and the mm. art. So for me, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a performer. Mm. I would say over the years, I grew up to love people. Right. I'm a grow to appreciate the fact that people pay me. Right. To sing my can't right, right. still can't believe, can't believe that. believe it, right? You know what I mean? And my love. Like I'm a big fan of the old school and a big fan of the, the, the culture and the art. Right. So like look up to people who can perform. Right. And we we'll watch old school Bojo video and watch Beanie Man video and watch and try to you know, realize that there's an art to it. It's not just, oh, this song is so big, this artist mm. is so big, and then here he is on the stage. Right. And there's an art and thought put into it and them something mm. then. So that's really the way I look upon it. And there are some youth now I can identify with, really put that, that, that level of thought into it. Right. I realize, well, listen, you get this money, bro. Mm. And these people come to see you. Right. Like, it's not just, you know, you, when you call up, when you have a problem in your house, mm. You can't fix the cupboard by yourself. Right, right, right. Or you can cool pay up. your money for somebody to fix the cupboard. Right. But when they, after you pay your money, you want that shit fixed properly. Right. Right? So, like, you, you develop the love for the art and the appreciation for the fact that you're blessed with, with the opportunity mm. to be doing music. And I think that's what it is. I don't, some people are natural performers. Some people have been taught to perform. Right, right. And some people, I would say, I fall in the category of just appreciate the fact that I'm given this opportunity. Mm. You know what I mean? So if people stand up out there and they might give me the energy. You're giving it right back. Yeah, and if I did it once and, and it, it, they didn't receive it right, I'm going to look at it and wonder, like, what could I have done different? Right. So you're continually evolving. Right. Mm. But it's all, bro, it all stems from the love of the genre and the love of the art and the love of music. I, w I, I won't lie. I won't lie. Like, you know, I see you on stage and I, me I go back to when we first became friends and it's like... I always used to say, you remind me of myself in this. I'm not the greatest people's person, yeah. but I feed off of energy, you know? Feed off of energy. Right. So, I'm, I like, so I see you as this kind of person that, you see, you, if you walk into a room and there's a hundred people in there and you're not performing, you're just walking into the room. I see you as the kind of person who just hold your corner and just, and just hold your vibe and speak when you're spoken mm -hmm. to and not try to own that room. So that now seeing you, when I see you on stage, it's like, because I know you as a person, and then I see you as right, a, right. that like person a totally stage, different person. Like a completely yeah. different thing, you know? And like, yeah. I, think that, I think that has, that has affected me both positively and negatively mm. in my career. Right. Because, you know, you have some people where the work, the room type of person will come in and they're a character. Like, if you mm. are interviewed with Bounty Killer, you'll probably yeah. laugh at least 70 times since the interview starts right. by just the character that he is. Yeah. I'm, I don't think I'm a okay. character. Me just a youth. Mm. And I happened to do music over mm. the years and I gotten good at it. Right. And you know what I mean? So when I get on the stage and it look for me good now, this is around the world. When I go on stage, if the crowd is acting like they didn't come to party, right. I'm not one of those guys that's gonna be like, yo, I'm um, begging you to I'm party. professional. <laughs> I'm gonna make you part. No. <laughs> I already got paid, remember that. <laughs> right? So I definitely feed off of, feed off of people's energy, but and I just appreciate Brother, people, if you want to come party, I'm going to give it to you. Like you mentioned Bounty Killer. Let me tell you, I've only ever met Bounty Killer once. And you know Barnes, um, Chronix is manager. Yeah. So before Chronix, um, Barnes used to work at a studio called Payday. Um, Payday studio. Yeah, Minos. Payday, 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 yeah. Payday. So I was there one night with Barnes and Bounty Killer walks in. Sure. Bounty Killer the walks room in. Lift up. Listen, let me tell you. <laughs> First of all, Jenna, 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 and me, I'm just looking, because I'm, uh, all I know is this music. Yeah. Cross, angry, miserable. Yeah, man, man, they so character, man. Bounty Killer's Day, comes out of the car, and you know, he walk like he owned the place, right? Yeah. So me, I'm just like, I think I've been in Kenya for like, maybe a year or two. So I've gone up to him like, yo, listen, um, from Kenya, from a radio station, and like, I just love to do it, like, love to do an interview. Yo, <laughs> from the first word, <laughs> said, yo, now I do the interview, da, da, da. and I was like, like, you know, my shit, I was so embarrassed <laughs> because obviously I don't know how how killer flex, but you know I respect him. Before he left, he came over to me and he said, yo, 
Why you stay your name again? No, he won't forget. You listen to him? No, he won't forget. He won't listen. Like but most of, and, and not just Bounty Killer, but most of the characters mm. in 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 a dance hall, like the character is so heavy and mm. in front of the person. Right, right. That right. you'll probably get a little elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're really considering. So yeah, you, you when you say you remember you, you he remember everything what you said to him. He came up, yeah. But you were just talking to the character. Right. The time. Yeah. And then he came over and he was like, What is station name? What your name? And he went into the studio. Mm-hmm. Yo. No, no, big up, G-Money, hey, hey, one take. Like, just, like, I just was like, yo, this man is a, is a legend. Even the first time, like, one, one of my biggest songs, realest song, Keep Bad Mind Out, mm. man. The first time... You done me, a remix, right? Yeah, and may I tell you the story now of how the remix went down. So, like, me as an artist where, like, I wasn't introduced mm. to, like, my career wasn't... Co-sign. Yeah, I didn't get a yeah. co-sign. You know what that. I mean? So I don't know nobody. Mm. Nobody don't know my story. Everybody mm. just see this youth out of nowhere. Just All of a sudden. You know what I mean? So I reach out to Bounty Killer. I don't I don't remember how. And I say, yo, we need a um a verse. And them say, alright, write the verse. Wow. And and bring it come. So, but when we reach now, me pull up with like 70 months. <laughs> Cause me and my element. Right. So I will go in at the yard and the killer was out in one corner. Him not acknowledge me. Mm. Me send somebody and say, yo, conscience over this, and this big, big ego war yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah. And he met me waiting at the yard for like. <laughs> <laughs> yo, listen, this close for hate him. Right. Like hatred was right, like, was this close I know to, you are, to get to, now the, you're like, to the point of the hatred piss. because he was mm. in his element talking, yeah, people course. like surround him, and yeah. him attack, and you know, see the movements, and all right, no, I have to do this. Mm. <laughs> see the movements. And, <laughs> I'm going to give them it and I mean, I say, oh, me over here, so now with my people, man, everybody know me, like, my fuse is, like that. is this, so like, mm. me, like, me feel like me get disrespected, I'm like, yo, me, I cut it, I remember mm. who say, yo, just wait, no man, just wait, yeah. man. And, him come over to me, say, you ready? <laughs> just like that. I mean, I say, yeah, man, because me don't get, and we already, so yeah. me kind of cool to it. Mm. I go, and I have the verse for the recorder, and I'm going to the, I'm going to the boat. And so when we hear the verse, and him listen to it one time, and the beat play, and him sing it one time. That was it perfectly. Wow. Wow. And then him come out and he's a brand new person. Wow. Like I'm a brother come out now. Wow, go on. Wow. <laughs> because I guess we have a band now. Right, right. Brand right. new person and him come out and artist <laughs> now. Done. Mm. But it's like you have to you have to reach up to that fence. Mm. And you, you meet the character, right? And you have to get exposed to the character. There's right. no getting to me mm. without ex- yeah. being ex- exposed to the character. True that. You know what I mean, that. drama. And, and you know, for me, like when I look at Bounty and and Beanie especially, I love the way they're aging in dance soul. I love the way that like, cause you see, like coming up in the whole in like in Jamaica and seeing how the music was, you know, you had it used to be you have a big artist. And he's big for four or five years, and then he just fades. Mm-hmm. I mean, from the era of Admiral Bailey, like, end of the day, legendary in the 80s, early 90s. But, you know, I love the way how Bounty Killer and Beanie Man are now the elder statesmen statesman yeah. of dancehall. And how they're also embracing the younger youths who are coming through, you know what I mean? If it was up to me, though, I would prefer if I hear from Bounty Killer or Beanie Man for, like, four years. Why? I just feel like, imagine or what that would feel like. Right. Right, how you how you you miss it. Imagine them. a bounty killer tour after Phoenix here or sick bounty killer mm. for four years. I hear that. Like, almost, it... almost like Beris. When mm. when Beris Salmon do him do like the same run every year. Mm. Every two years or something like that. Right. And it always feel like this nostalgic feeling. Right. So right. I think Bounty Killer and Beanie Man are so much a part of what's going on now. Mm. For me as a fan, like me understand but where, it, is that where in business Jamaica? is concerned. Yeah, in mm. Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. Like me understand the business part of it. Mm. But as a fan, I would love for just to see them for like two, three, four years. And then, and yeah, then see them them, the tickets drop for Bounty Killer and Beanie Man. Right, right. Ooh. Yeah, I feel that's actually a good, yeah. a, a good perspective. I think that for, for me, I just, I, just, I just love the fact that, as the, as the, 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 that they haven't disappeared. You right. know? They won't ever disappear. Yeah. Legendary business. They won't ever disappear, mm-hmm. never. I, I, and also, I, I, I see Beanie, well, Beanie Man's been on the road hard yeah. since... since this whole COVID thing, I know he's UK, I think he's in Ghana, he was in Africa. And he's, and I, I say to people all the time, 
like if there's one artist that I wish everybody could have seen perform in their in their prime, prime. it was Beanie Man. Beanie Man in his prime on stage was a beast. But we still have it. I've not seen him for a while, yeah? We yeah? still have it, but still Prime. It. Prime Beanie Man. Just the other day we are, we have a big discussion about Elephant Man. Oh, and we have to listen, like um people know mm. are where does it are even when me with me coming up. I'm such a fan of music right. that if I see Elephant Man, I'm starstruck. Right. I still have my composure because I'm yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I know deep down inside. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a level of starstruck yeah. there. It's yeah, there oh, because I've seen what them man they do. I see artists backstage, I shiver because being a man and Elephant Man and Capitan and them oh man. Oh my God, don't even mention so like you, So you two come out now, I feel like the era, the, the, the thing has changed so much and become such an online thing mm. that them are exposed to like the real great. So them say Bounty Killer and yeah, right, it's know. Bounty Killer. But they don't know. It's not really our Bounty Killer, yeah. Eh, whatever. Yeah. But for we, what we yeah. know yeah. of, yeah. bro, it's a different elephant bag. Man. Man. Elephant man, elephant man, elephant man, um, grandmother man. used to live across the road from us. So random story, my grandmother is actually in one of Elephant Man's videos. Yeah, because um, river up on the bank. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was um something to do with night, nine, nine, night, nine, some nine, nine, nine business, some yeah. fuck up business. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, um, another thing you're talking about. Um, no, 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 that, that one. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so his grandmother is in the video. My grandmother is in the video as well. <laughs> That's the one, and then the poker dancing and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah my grandmother is in Elephant Man video. Dance all in my blood. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sign and seal. <laughs> Sign and seal, man. How do you how do you balance it all though? Because I mean, I love the way I love to see the relationship that you have with your kids and your family and your wife. Because you you you've not you, you've not you've not hidden it. You know, most people hide it. You know, when they get to that point, they hide their family. And one thing I'm with you is that I, I, not so much now. I think maybe you got fed up with social media, but I feel that like, <laughs> that like there's a point where you are living so openly, you get me? And I even used to, like, there was a time when I even said, people say, yo, conscience this, conscience that, blah, 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 this has happened, that has happened. And I used to say to myself, How? you know what, people don't understand this, this thing, this, mm -hmm. this life thing and this mm -hmm. marriage thing and this relationship thing. But I mean, even the other night when you were talking to, to your daughter, I know, I know it sounds like we're old, but like she grown, she is grown. All right, you see that now? Like, mm. that's just me. Mm. And I think because of the way how I entered um, music and the person that I am, mm. like, like I said earlier, I'm not a character. Mm. When you look at me, like this is me. Right. The only time there is a there is a, a shift is if is when we get on the stage mm. and the music busting in my head. Mm. Otherwise, there is no prep. There is no nothing different. There is just me. If mm. me hurt, me go cry. Mm. If me happy, me go laugh. Mm. Like. There's no, there's no front. Right. So you will see the highs and you will see the lows. Right, right. So if, if I could get a, like, if I manage an artist, I would definitely advise them against it. Right. Like, don't be so open. Don't, you know what I mean? Put up that wall. Right. But unfortunately, my career was trial and error, so I didn't get a chance to, like, Someone say it's hey, yeah, too much. You know what I mean? And mm. I never have an advisor. Right. So it's something that I would definitely do different if I had the chance to mm. do it. Right. Definitely. It, right. You have some people that appreciate it and appreciate the fact that yo, you're sharing. Show, yeah, right? yeah. And I think it's good to an extent. It's good for, I, I think it's good for artists to see and other people coming up in the industry mm. to see. Because so many smoke screens and so many. Right, right. Yeah, they have mm. this perception and this idea of what being um, an artist is. Mm. So it's good to have that balance. But me never have to be the balance. Right. <laughs> me wish me never have you were a case study. Yeah, I, I, mean, I wish I was not the case study. And, you know and, what I mean? And, 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 and I'd ask because for me, like, like knowing you, like, you've, you've just, you've never changed as far as, as far as long as I've known you. You've always been that person. I, and I kind of think that like, now that you've said it, you weren't co-signed by anyone. Yeah, I weren't. You just had, you just had to work your way through. And that's, and that's unusual. In that yeah, era. and then and my career started when everybody was co side. Mm. Everybody was in everybody a crew. Was either this or Gaza, that. Gaza, Gully, mm. Alliance, mm. Steve McGregor, yes. they have like a yes. whole Big movement. Yeah. Jordan, they have like a whole movement. That's it, they have like, like oh, me wow. was just a youth. 
<laughs> oh, they like this and you know what I mean? Mm. So that's why I always love my fans because mm. my career started by just me. Mm. I, I, promoting I, I mean, directly to fans. I won't lie, like from the day, the first song I actually heard from you, um, as in Conscience, funny enough, was a song you did for Arif about 12, 11, 12, 11 years ago. Which one? Sexy Girl Rhythm. Oh, Charlie Black's upon her rhythm. Charlie Black's upon her rhythm. With a big well. song, yeah. Well, oh, that was his big. Yes. Yeah, every girl can't move in a Yes, yeah. yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I'm busy. Busy was on that rhythm as well. Cartel was on that rhythm as well. Yeah, yeah, Cartel yeah. Big rhythm, rhythm well. big rhythm, that, yeah. And you know the thing about it is, I was here when that, I was already here when that rhythm dropped. And I won't lie to you. As Arif's my brethren, we went to school together. So, as a matter of fact, Arif, I met Arif. You true Arif. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Arif and I went to school together. So, he knows I, I, I do radio and even as in the UK. So, any rhythm he get, he sent it to me like months in advance. So, when this rhythm came, I was a busy signal, vibes cartel, Charlie Blacks. Charlie Blacks now was just, I know him as a selector. I don't know him yeah. as no. That artist. was his in because yeah. he know the whole industry from being. A wicked selector. A good selector. So, so yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then I see conscience. In random like, mute. <laughs> Who's this, who this guy? So, then when I start playing the juggling now, and I'm like, actually, I kind of like this tune still. Mm. You know? I kind of like this tune still. And then, after that, I started to pay more attention to, to your music. And I think it was... What's it, the song that made me seek you out, I think, was... It wasn't, it wasn't Represent, it was before Represent. Yeah, long before, long, long before. Long before Rep Represent. But there was one song you had, and I'm trying to remember which one was it. It wasn't really a song. Hmm. Anyway, it will come to me. There was yeah. a song you had, and I was like, yo, I need to find this artist. And I came to Jamaica looking for you. That's crazy. Crazy. I know you probably thought, what, what did you think, like, like when Arif called you, like... Cause them time there, you were nowhere, you were nowhere like under on the radar. Like yeah, but you were with them time, you know. Like if you you have a big song, mm. and then you have international attention from. Was people. it a simple song? No, Before simple that. song long after. You, you you have the attention from just selectors who want dub plate. Right, right. So I think you were just a man who wants some dub plate. I said, all right. Go we'll scrape some food and find out money. What's your name? G, man. I <laughs> Chat some dub plate. Take you know, away money and all that vibe. Man came to the studio. I didn't even ask for a dub. I didn't mm. even ask for a dub. Yeah. Because you see, in those days there, like, it was Elaine. It was Cecile. Chris. Actually, yeah, it was. Those were the ones who were now, when I went, I asked them for dubs. But mm -hmm. you know, it was just, it was just the art. It's like, yeah. It was just the art. And I, I, I had no idea that... That and I think also the fact that you sang and DJ'd as yeah. well. That was that was um that was big for me. So I I, I know it was just I just, I just thought that this guy is talented. That's it. Respect. A hundred percent. You know. At the end of the day, like even I can tell you this on camera, man. Like every DJ is always asking me, like, Yo, G, get your brother to do me a drop. Because <laughs> you know what, and may appreciate that because you're very selective mm. about who you, you ask me for a, a, a dub or a job for because mm. you, you already, you know the, over, the overwhelming mm. level of work you may have. Mm. So now everybody say, yo, G money, you me see you text me, I say, yo. So when you message me, I say, yo, he no wants up my, you know what I mean? Mm. I'll do it, I'll do that quick. Yeah. Cause you know, abuse it. Yeah. I want, I, I, another um, interesting story. And I actually played this song in the club last night. I've not played it for years. People don't know how that Festa skank Remix came about. That's crazy. So, Festa Skank, big tune from, um, from Lethal B in the UK. Um, big tune, we started to play that tune. You were in France at the time. Yeah. You were in France at the time, and I sent you the instrument, I was like, yo, this is a big UK tune, we need you to, to do something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you had the beat for long, long. So, then he messaged me, and he's like, yo, I think I had to send you, I had to send you the, the beat again because you was in the hotel, literally saying, boy, I'm in the hotel, not now go and send me the beat and you travel with your studio yeah. or fam. So I was on air that night and I said, yo, Conscience has told me he's going to... That's You said that? I was on air. <laughs> Thank God I did it. <laughs> and you sent the tune just before the show finished. That's crazy. And I remember playing it and I, I remember hearing the, um, just the drop, boom. Fresh Ooh, from Kingston, Jamaica. Man. Then I was like, wow. To the point where Lethal B's lawyers now reached out to me because they wanted to put you on the remix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Late Richie Antwi passed away. God rest his soul. Good youth in music. 
But yo, that was that was one of the maddest things, and, and, and guys don't even know that. Like when you come, every time you've come to Kenya, apart from I think once, you've reached out to find out a Kenyan artist who you can flip something for, and guys don't even know why you do it. Guys, like I think sometimes, like a guy saying, "Yo, conscience heard my song, and it's so hot he jumped on it." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yo, you know what? I mean, I, I was going to say something. I mean, I said something, yeah, something happened. But I was like, yo, these guys are crazy. <laughs> but for me, bro, it's just... Mm. Um, as a music fan, right. I know what I would want to see. Right. I know what I would want to see happen. Right. Like, Drake, I come to Jamaica. Yeah. I would want to see, hear him get him call and say, yo, what's hot in Jamaica? Right. And be like, tomorrow you wake up here randomly, just hear like this big remix with Drake and the so biggest cool. artist in the world and whichever new youth. Yeah. I, come, like, I like that. I, I, I mm. like that energy as a fan. So I'm like, and I don't do it just with Kenya. Mm. You do it everywhere. Yeah, I do it with whoever. You know what I mean, I, there's like a few people where, where I have our type of connection with. Right. And we can reach out with and them just send me something without anything. Like you, like, Certain people, if I reach out and be like, yo, what's hot? Mm. They'll try to go in the studio right now and try to make something make for themselves. Some, yeah. <laughs> make something for themselves or it have to be their friend or, you know what right, I mean? Right. But you'll be like, hey, you know what? This is hot. And mm. I said it and I can trust it. Yeah, and, and, and the funny thing is that every single... Or every, this is good. This, yeah, this, this is artist, good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because well, I, know, I know when you dropped that intro verse for, for Epic, it changed the dynamic of that song completely. Because yeah. it was a big tune, but when you jumped on it, man, that was like, that was... That was the cut now, that was the club cut. And I think, do, do, do you, when you're, when you're making a song, when you're doing something like that, do you think about how it's gonna be sound in the club? Yeah. Like, cause I know it's with the, um, with the Epic remix, um, you say, hey, da, 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 hey, and that's the part now that the crowd sing to, hey. That's the fun, the, that's, mm. that's me being a fan again. Right. That's understanding how DJs play music and right. how the club react and just me being a fan. Like what would I want to, like, how can I approach this song without spoiling the song? Right, right. The most lyrics and do this and mm. overshadow the artist, or do I want to just compliment it mm. and make it be a nice club banger? Mm. Like, yeah. yeah. What do you think about what? What do you think about like Afro beats and the music coming out of the continent? Love it. Yeah. I love it. I love everything about it. I think it's. I think Afro beat. Let me can say this one camera too. I think mm. Afro beat is what dancehall used to be. I'm glad you said that, you know. I think that's what dance hall used to be. I'm glad and you said what that. what it needs to be. Do you know what? I won't even lie to you. I think... You take a drink for that. I take a drink for that. <laughs> yeah. I think that Afro beats, Afro swing, literally... Can I get some from Cranberry? I literally think that they've t they, they took everything, the rhythmic, the rhythm of dancehall. And like when, I, when, like when I hear some of these songs, like come, especially coming out of, of West Africa, I'm like, yo, this is rhythmic dancehall. Uh, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, like when you listen to um, a, a song like, um, like um, Techno Rara, My Country People, boom, 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 boom. That's a dancehall mm -hmm. rhythm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of Burner Boy stuff. It's and I, and I, don't think, I, I don't think African artists shy away from the fact that it is, it is mm. what it is. Mm. I think they appreciate it. I think, the, strange enough, I think the only people in the world who don't appreciate that type of dance and music is Jamaican, Jamaican people. It's going to be crazy because a lot of genres start from dancehall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You yeah, remember making Vice heard from yeah. that guy? Yeah. In, in, we talk about this daily. Like, the, the, the feel of it, I think, I think Afrobeat kind of kind of level it up a little bit though. Mm. Unreal. Because they have more artists just singing. Mm. It's, it's like a good music genre. Right, right. The genre is just good music just and good. production, mm -hmm. what the song is saying, Presentation. is mm -hmm. just a good vibe. You know what I mean? So I think our music has become more, as in Jamaican music, has become more Jamaican music. Right, more. Like more just we. Specific. And it's not even with the slangs because mm -hmm. people still don't know what Sean Paul was saying. True. Well, you made a lie and Pastor Joe say. No, 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 no. Right? I love more, more, and that's more. one of the biggest songs in history. Right. So it's not even about what understanding what, what the artist is saying. Even with Nigerian music, mm. I don't know what they're saying, but, but it's but a the vibe. Feel, but the field it's, feel. it's a vibe. I, I won't I won't lie to you. And um, you know, even as a guy who's who's still on the radio, still a lover of the culture, 
90% of the music that comes out of Jamaica today, I don't really mess with it. That's and, so unfortunate, and, and, man. And that's unfortunate because it's like, it's like living in a place like Kenya, you know, and I, was, I said this to Heno before, when I, when I ask an artist for a dub, I ask them for a song that I know I'm going to be able to play in 10 years' time. You get me? Value. I've never been a guy as a DJ to want a dub for everything. If I want a dub play, I want a dub play of a song that in five or six or seven years' time, like I played out last night, and I played so many dubs that are six, five, six, seven years old, but they mash up the place because they're good music. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I do not even go and Damn. try and get dubs from the other artists. Them. I don't. Kamar sent me a dub like five years ago, four or five years ago. I didn't, I didn't know who he was, but I love the tune. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I asked you to do one for Heno as well. You have it as well, Heno, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Heno has it as Damn. well. Mm. But, it's, but it's music. Now, at the end of the day, like, that, that I can't tell you the hot artist, the big tune. It's become such a different... I'm, you know, guys say, gee, you're old now. But guess what? Your ears don't get old. The same way that I can tell you about the best artists coming out of Nigeria or Ghana or even um, South Africa, Kenya. And you can predict it. And I can predict it. Why or, can't... Or even if you don't, you just know good music. You just yeah. know good music, you, right? It feels good. You know it going somewhere. Right. And, and that's the problem that I have. Because, I mean, there's a time Heno and I did a, a live during this whole COVID thing. And Ke Heno played a back of the new artist. Them. There he is, he's there. You ask him. I floated. <laughs> I was floating like, okay. <laughs> Gage. Who? <laughs> Sleeping, who this that, you know, and and then I was thinking, T, no, T, at least T J has a little is, rhythm, is rhythmic. Yeah, yeah. He he's rhythmic without that, without a doubt. You know what I mean? But, hey, you know what? Remember, come me, me, me kind know of me love go, defend the genre. Mm. I mean, I gotta stop. So, you see, the thing is, I think. Say it, man. They don't make <laughs> music for me. Them not make music for you. No, <laughs> mm -mm -mm. music not the age and and and. and you know what I mean? Like, you know good music, no matter how long you're in, the, you're in this. Mm. When me do a song with him, we not right, no for nobody. Mm. Me and being him on the Ghana. No, Guyana. And being him and sit across from me, and him say, you know, you, you ever hear a song, you wish I did you sing it? Mm. And me say, no. I say, this is that one, eh? I bad mind you. I wish I did me <laughs> sing that. I wish I, I wish I sang that song. Yeah. And that's a song. And it, it, it end up saying, me grow, if you hear songs and be like, yo, that song they have my name written all over it. Like, right, right, that's right. how me would have put, put it together. Mm. Alkal yeah. Alkaline, them are not a girl they say, wait. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a conscience song. Right, right. You know why? Because regardless of how old you are or if you've done it before or whatever, you know good music, bro. Right, you know right, something right, put right, together right. properly. So, but let me say this. You mentioned Skilly and some new man. Like, they're, mm. them show, they show, I can see potential in them. Right. But I feel like there's a disconnect between good music mm. and local trendy music. Right, right, right. I think that's the, the biggest lines. And, and I think if, like for me, it was all about loving what was before me. Right, right, And right. then doing something new, but still bringing mm. some elements of it. Mm. I think what happened now is, <laughs> whatever new does not have no element of what was right, before. Right, right, right. And then they really figure out mm. the, 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 where the lineage, it, the, the connection. Exactly, where, where it's mm. going to cross. Mm. So I think, I don't know, I, I don't want to point fingers and say who is to be right, blamed, right. but what I can do is say, yo, we just need to find a way of a bridge that mm. gap. Do you, find, do you think that, I, I find that the power seems to have moved from the producer to the artist, in the sense that like back in the day, you had your, your linchpin producers, you had the Don Corleone's, you had the geniuses, you had all, all of these, these, um, these, these legendary producers. And I think, they sort of galvanized the artist, even though it was more rhythm driven and all that stuff, but there was something at least, there was a level of, of consistency. But I find now, is, 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 is it more so, the, uh, the power lies more with the artist than the producer? Definitely, the power has always been with the artist, but mm. guess what? Producers just kind of level up with knowledge. Right. And it become a, a, a matter of, like who own being man masters? Right, right. Who won Bounty Killer Masters, who won all of these artists that we love from back in the days, Masters. Mm. And you find the, the generation of me now, my generation. Because mm. you're different. Start to, to say, hey, so you are going to own this because you gave me the beat. 
Oh. Uh, let's see how this works. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. So me start become producer. Everybody right. start become producer, and then man just too selfish and thief, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? And and I think our like as Jamaicans, you don't know some Jamaican flag. Yeah, our mm. level of national pride, and we feel like we're the biggest thing on earth. So you find say we actually bigger than how big our genre actually is. Right. Our genre is not big enough and rich enough to sus- to be to sustain itself with all of that commotion happening. Right. right. You know what I mean? When 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 rivalries happen, it's pe- it's it's in such a small space that it really uproot the entire industry. Right. It's a rivalry between me, you and you. Right. And you rob you and everybody know like the genre not big enough to be to continue with so much friction happening. A man just said, I rob artists and artists and say, you know what? Me, I go produce for myself then. You can right. go sit down. So you find so the level of production drop. Mm. And it, it, I think it's just all, all because of a lack of, of wanting to share. Right, right. That's yeah. really what it is. Because I, I mean, me seeing a lot of the, the, the producers moving to the States and doing things and working outside the genres, I'm like, wow. Because there, to me, if you think about the history of dancehall, every legendary old school producer groomed a new wave. So if Jamie's, Bobby Digital coming all the way up. If you think about people like Fatis coming through, there was always a link between the older guys and the guys who were coming through. Mm-hmm. And they worked somewhere. And I think sometimes I think that if, if the producers who were major 10, 12 years ago have all decided that, have all given up on dancehall, then there's no... There's no, there's no one who's bringing through the next level of... of I blame, uh, and again, I blame my, my generation for that. Mm. Because we are the generation who decide to say, you can't rob way. <laughs> right. You get me? I say, yeah. Jim, you cannot produce a song and take it for yourself. Like, all right, name all of the, no disrespect to all the big producers. You know what I mean? Mm. Before me, respect and everything. Good. See? But name all of the big producers before. Mm. How are they doing right now in life? Lovely. Mm. What about the artists that they produced? Well, let me just take a drink <laughs> on that one there. Mm. Mm. There is with a random girl one time from Uptown, and she's like, yeah, my father owned a big artist, Masters. I'm like, is he a producer? No, he's a doctor. I mean, I said, oh, he owned <laughs> so, so <laughs> <he, laughs> the Masters. I'm like, <laughs> you understand what I said? Right, and right, right. Then we see, um, what the man name again, Junior Biles on the road. Right. And then people are like, yo, sing, sing. He's, he's lost his mind. Right. And he's sing one of the biggest, biggest songs. tunes ever in the history like, of music. So my generation is a generation who come and ask questions and be like, yo, mm. how this work? So this should be 50-50 then. Right. And I think that, 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 that creates a, a kind of vibe between producers and artists and mm. then the artists take to themselves and mm. say, you know what, let me do my own thing. And producers say, all right, go on. Mm. So that's, that's what caused the world. How's, how's the new album doing? It's doing great. Yeah? Yeah. Numbers, nice? Numbers, nice. I, I, I was watching on Spotify. Well, yeah. Numbers are nice. I, yeah, numbers, nice. And you don't know Miami tax man. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not doing that well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, it's, it's doing good, though. It's doing good. Mm. And I see you making inroads in that whole, into that whole Latino music community as well. Because yeah. I saw you do a song last year with... Um, I don't remember the name is, but the video was bad and your hair was out like that. I never remember which one that, but I really love the Latin market and that's, that's another, another genre that really embraced dancehall mm. as, a, as a genre that kind of started their genre. Right, right, right. Or like the whole reggaeton thing and... Right, yeah, and, and they're not shy with it. Mm. You see, the thing is with Afrobeat and Latin artists, they're not shy with that knowledge in the fact that, yo, that's conscience. Mm. Who that being in my, who busy, you know what I mean? Mm. They're really excited about it. It's mm. only for us now as... Jamaicans to sit back and, and be like, all right, mm. what's not being done properly? Who do you listen to when you're not, when you're just chilling? Like, who, who? Everything, bro. Yeah? Everything. Yeah? Yeah. You're like, you can run, sorry, you can randomly be up today listening to J Balvin, tomorrow listening to. Maybe not. Maybe I, I, I won't be a liar. Mm. So I listen to the hit songs. The hit songs. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? In, in, in Latin and in Afrobeat too. Mm. Because the language barrier still remains. Right, right, right. So, I can't listen to an entire song in Spanish. Right. But definitely, I love the melodies, I love the, the, um, the cadences, and, mm. and you know what I mean? Just in Latin America, where have you performed? Costa Rica, obviously. Costa, Costa Rica, America. Colombia. 
Colombia. Colombia? Everywhere, yeah, man. Costa Rica, Colombia, El Salvador, wow. Honduras. Really? Mexico. I hear that there's a dance hall scene in Honduras. Big. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Especially this, there's a small island off the coast of Honduras called Roatan. Mm. They love it, big yeah. there. Yeah. Where's the one place that you haven't performed that you wish you could, you, you want Brazil. to perform? Brazil. I want to go for it. You know what? I don't, I, I don't even know if it's more of a performance vibe or I just want to go there. Me too. Yes. Yeah. I've I seen enough carnival videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more like Brazil. Mm. You know what I mean? And definitely mm. Gambia got like, there's a whole stretch of African countries yeah, that I, think, I haven't I been. Think, I think because when I when I because I used to do radio in um, Ghana, I think Ghana is just where Kenya was probably six seven years ago in terms of dancehall. So mm -hmm. for example, and it's very interesting because popcorn is big in Gambia and Ghana, mm -hmm. but you go to other African markets and he's not as as big as but there are places where you're huge where he's not, and there are places where he's he, huge. Yeah, which is always the way. I um I think that um, Ghana. Ghana still has that mainstream dancehall feel. So Beanie Man, yeah. Sean Paul, and those guys would still go to Ghana and get um, great turnouts. But I think now there's a whole movement of the younger um, Ghanaians who are now embraced. Because dance, like Ghana, Ghana has its own dancehall artists. Right, right. Like outside of the Shatawales, Stone Boys, there's people like Jay Dorobi, Sean, whatever his name is, I can't remember his name, who are coming up bubbling, they're bad. They're like, if, if, if you talk about any country that has the patwa down, some of those Ghanaian dancehall guys, Nigeria's different. Nigeria, even as a DJ, is the hardest place I've ever DJed. Because I went, uh -huh. to, I went to Nigeria and, you know, the, the MC introduced me, oh, G Money, dancehall ambassador, blah, 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 Jamaica. After four songs, they were like, hey, boss, play our music. <laughs> <laughs> they hey, you know what enough people don't realize? Like, even people that, that like to compare and be mm. like, yo, why um, Wizkid bigger than Popcorn? Mm. And why, you know, and I compare like Vibes Cartel and Wizkid and mm. be like, people don't realize there's like 200 million people like in Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. So like... And they ride for their own, bro. Exactly, and they have their own industry. Mm. So even though it, it's, it was birthed from dance or somewhat, yes, yeah. them have their own thing. Mm. So you feel like you're the biggest thing and go over there and say, yeah, you're going to yeah. do it. No, nah, that's not how it works. They weren't interested. I wasn't ready. Like, I, I can't wait to go back there and DJ because I feel... I feel like, I kind of feel like I flopped that first time there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, for real. Listen, man, what does the future hold, man? What's, what's next? What's on, your, what's on the horizon? Bro, all right, man. Should I get myself up to a level of, of power mm. where I can be like, yo, this is a new artist, yo. This right. is a new artist, yo. This is a new... I really love that, that right. part of music. Right. And my thing for like, from like eight years ago, that was my calling. Right. Five, six years ago. Mm. But I think I wasn't ready. Right. I think we're ready now. I respect that. You know I mean, so like in the next two, three years, that's really what I see myself doing. I don't want to be, no disrespect, Sean Paul and Shaggy and mm. Beanie and be like age 40 something, 50 something. Right, right. You want to live touring. Up on I, the next I, I hate level. it. Yeah, mm. no, I, I don't want to be touring. I don't want to be pushing brand conscience mm. at, that, at that age. Right. You know what I mean? But I definitely want to be in music until the mm. day I hit the dirt. Until the coffin drops. Yeah. Well, brother, I mean, You've come to Kenya. This is you. This is ten years after your, literally ten years after your first visit. Wow. Ten years after your first visit, and the first time you come on me, had <laughs> my brother. It's always real, man. Yeah, man. Like I said, keep flying the dance of flag. You got man like Kamara in the background, just ready to just take it to another Listen, level. The man ain't that joke thing, man. <laughs> all right, if you want the buffer, I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> the man ain't playing no games. I like, He's ready. I'm, for seeing him, kind of inspirational. I actually meet him last year. Wow. You know what I mean? I went to Jamaica and I went, I went there for like, it was supposed to be a week. Mm. You got stuck, I, I yeah. got stuck there because I didn't believe COVID was real. <laughs> so I went there, got stuck. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him take over my studio, I'm, him and my engineer, like, they're, they're running my studio. So I'm like, yo, all right. I went there, so we end up after being in the studio all the time. And the energy just clicked because it's a youth where I can see that he, he really love artistry. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? He love that, the artistry part of it, and he's not just trying to make a quick dollar. No microwave thing. No microwave thing. So mm. I'm, I really appreciate them thing because I, I'm, I'm cut from the same cloth. Right. And you wanna see him on the stage the other night? Well, yeah. you probably see clips. Yeah, I saw those clips. We go to the club and we're like, yo, we're gonna chill in the club. 
He's out there, man. The performance on the yeah, on the ready. Like him want it, you know what I mean? And yeah. them thing they really me really appreciate them thing that's how you to I will have hit songs right. in Jamaica compared to other artists who have hit songs in Jamaica. The level of, of, you know, of uh, intent and, 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 and Right, it's and, like and I'm here now. Yeah. He's like, yeah, me want over this or this or this or this or Jamaica, me want it too. Mm. But give me the world too, I want it. And well, I'm, I can tell him if he doesn't know him, I'm sure he knows by now that he's around one of the best to ever do it. So, you know, I always say, you know, if you want to be hot, you got to stand next to fire. Mm -hmm. And right now, this man is beyond fire because it's, it's cool to be hot for one year, mm -hmm. for two years, but to be hot for 10, 15 years, that's the motive. And that's the inspiration. So, like I said, you know, he came here for the first time in 2011 or 12, remember. one of those years there. Yeah. And 10 years later, you saw the crowd the other night. And I can tell you that every time he's come progressively, the shows have been bigger, the shows have been better. And it's not many artists, whether it's dancehall or hip hop, most of the hip hop artists who come here, come here once. And that's it. It's a wrap. They, we're tired of you, you're not coming back. But in the time that I've been here, I've never seen an artist come here as many times as him, and that's not a bad thing, you know? Um, I know Chris has been here three times, and one of them was to bail me out, so it wasn't a real show. It was just like, a, yo, G, my father pull out and come through. Um, I know yeah. Lane. Oh, that's another story. Yeah. That's like, oh, man. You know, I'll give you a story, true story. My YouTube channel that is popping right now, the Good Company channel, do you know the first video on that channel was an apology from Mavado? That's crazy. I opened that channel just to post up that apology <laughs> from Mavado. Everything happened for a reason. That's and what now I'm looking at it, man. For real. That. So listen, man, this is exclusive for the good company. Make sure you, you like, you share and subscribe. I think it's been an amazing conversation. And like we said, man, we're there. Let's eat some food. And our conscience. Yes, Come on, icon. Icons. Man. Uh -huh. Uh-huh.